Good morning friends, my name's Ted and it's great to join you for morning prayer here in the prayer workshop. The night has passed and the day lies open before us, so before we do anything else, let's pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence as revealed in your word, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. If you haven't done today's readings yet, then now is an excellent time to do so. Go on, take all the time you need. We'll be here when you get back. Our verse for today comes from our first lesson, Zechariah chapter 14, verse 20. On that day, holy to the Lord will be inscribed on the bells of the horses, and the cooking pots in the Lord's house will be like the sacred bowls in front of the altar. Let's pray. Stir up, we pray you, O Lord, the wills of your faithful people, that they, plenteously bringing forth the fruit of good works, may by you be plenteously rewarded. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The wild ride of the prophet Zechariah comes to its glorious conclusion, and it is wonderful reading it alongside Revelation. We have the New Jerusalem, with the people being brought in from all around the world, and everything has become holy to the Lord. No longer is there a separation between holy and profane. It might be worthwhile going back over our study of Leviticus to remind us of the importance of this separation. There is no need for any separation now. There is no longer anything profane to worry about. Everything is now holy, from the bells on the horses to the crockery in the kitchen. God is in the midst of his people. You may already be starting to get a sense of the fact that this separation is already starting to break down. We still have profanity in this world, but the number of things that fall into the category of holy is a larger one than it was in the days of the temple. This is the wonder of the now and not yet tension of Christ's work on the cross. We may not have horses and bells, but we do have cars and horns. Is your car horn holy to the Lord? And we no longer have sacrificial crockery, nor a temple to hold them in, but we do have kitchens and pots. Is your kitchen adorned with the banner holy to the Lord? The King stands above all creation and is drawing people in from all over the world to celebrate the feast. One day all things will come to its glorious conclusion, but in the meantime the work is still ongoing. On the one hand, the old laws about things like our diet have been left behind, yet on the other they have been fulfilled by Jesus. Everything we do, think, eat, say and work on is to be holy to the Lord. The old law of Moses finds its fulfilment when the principles behind that law inform our entire lives. And Jesus has given us a new and eternal life in which to live this way. On to what mundane thing could you slap the label of holy to the Lord today? Let's pray. Thrice holy God, you are drawing all people to yourself through the miraculous power of your Spirit and by virtue of the precious blood of Jesus. Make us into a holy people, holy as you are holy. In Jesus' name, Amen. Thanks for joining me today, friends. We'll see you again tomorrow. And in the meantime, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.